and I am live, or am I? Hey everyone. Oh gosh, I'm trying something different today or tonight because it's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm trying something different. Um, I saw one of my friends, my Facebook friends, actually I met her in, in real person, but I saw um, Miss Contessa Louise um, use BeLive.tv. So shout out to Contessa. I've learned so much from her in just a couple of months. So I'm going to try it tonight because I've been having issues with video lagging. Look, I'm testing. <laughs> so I'm just trying to see. And I'm live. Yay. So hopefully the video lagging issue will dissipate. But um, hi, everyone. Um, waiting for people to join. This is my first time using this particular software um, or program. Fingers crossed, prayers up. <laughs> like, I'm not cut out for this crap. <laughs> If you hear anything in the background noise, I am home. Everyone is, well, there's only two people, other people in the house. I've kind of cleared the house right now, but it's only two people in the house. So it may get a little rowdy. You may hear some bustling around. Don't worry. It's just my boyfriend <laughs> in there. Hey, boo. Hey, Shay. Thank you for joining, love. I am just babbling on um, tonight is going to be um, a tough talk, but I'm up for the challenge. So just holding out to people join in. Um, you know what? Let's share this. How about this? Give me just a few minutes. I'm Thank you for your patience. And so great. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to everyone who has joined me tonight. Thank you so much. I hope you have your favorite beverage in hand. If you do say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> hey, Adrian. Don't worry about it. I'm glad you joined me tonight, Adrian. And if you can, the replay will be up. And if the video is messed up, then I'll fix that too. It doesn't matter. Most important thing is the words. So that's the most important thing. Not my beautiful face. I know everyone wants to see my beautiful face. Yeah, Shay, got that one on deck. <laughs> and you know what? Tonight, I'm not going to be too long with you because tonight is Friday night. I'm showing up because I promised I would, but it's also date night. Love you too, sweetie. I can't wait to talk to you on Tuesday or oh, Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I don't know. I have you on my, I uh, have you on my calendar. So can't wait to talk to you. Um, yeah. So tonight is date night. My boo <laughs> surprised me today with a massage earlier. Cause you know, I had a crazy day yesterday. You know, I wasn't feeling well. I had a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress and yes, I don't know. I can't remember Adrian, but it's on my calendar. Um, but 
And so this morning um, we woke up and he was on the phone and he just made an appointment for <laughs> a massage for the both of us. So I'm like, you know what? He is such a keeper. <laughs> And so tonight I'm, I'm going to give him a massage. <laughs> it's our date night. So I'm not going to be before you long, but I did want to jump on tonight because one of the things that um, came to me, you know, I try to plan what I wanted to talk about for these Facebook lives, but I'm really the intent. I'm being intentional this year. That's my my word this year is to be intentional in things that I do for my business, in my relationships, for um you know, my personal life, my spiritual life. And so <laughs> I know, is it too much? <laughs> um, so I'm being intentional, but with this Facebook live, I believe that it was ordained by God um, because I don't do lives and I don't do Periscope and I, you know, I, I banned against all of that, but, you know, God really impressed upon me to do the Facebook live because there's something greater in store. And so in order for um, me to show up and to be transparent for those who, you know, watch all of my posts or read all of my books, then there are some things about me. You may look at me and say, oh my God, I wish I could have all that energy and I wish I could be so strong like her. And, and they see me now, but you you have to know my then in order to understand my now. And so, you know, God impressed upon me to show myself and show myself in a way that is real. And the reason why I'm doing live is because you can't, well, I'm not a fake person. So you, I can tell when someone is being fake with me. So I want you to look in my face, look in my eyes, look at my expressions and see the sincerity of my heart um, in every message that I do and every message that I relay. Um, trust me, I wouldn't tell you to do something that I wouldn't do. And I'm so not the church cliche person. Like, don't come to me talking about let go and let God. Like, give me something more than that. Like, give me some real food. Don't come to me with that crap. And so that's the type of, you know, conversation I'm going to have. Things that people would say, think to say, but wouldn't dare come out of their mouths because they're so, um, you know, they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't care about your feelings. I care about your heart. And it's your heart that I'm talking to. Even though there's a physical body here that's watching this and we're drinking wine together and we're sipping together. I'm really not talking to the man. I'm talking to the heart. And so I understand that. And I take full accountability and full responsibility for the things that I say to you and to the things that you know, for those who are watching the replay, thank you so much for considering me um, enough of of time in your schedule that you're that you're willing to. Those who showed up tonight, thank you so much for thinking of me enough to say, yeah, you know, I think she's worth listening to. <laughs> you know, I think I can stand listening to her one more time. I appreciate you. I really do. My heart, my heart is full and I'm so happy. So I'm not going to prolong this because I said I'm not going to be long and Shay knows, <laughs> my co-host knows I can go. I got some words in me. I can go, but I'm not going to do that tonight. So tonight's um, conversation is, it's a little, it's a little tough for me to share because I haven't really shared this publicly. I've shared it with my support group. I've shared it with my therapist. I've shared it with some really close friends, but um, I haven't shared this publicly, but I'm going to do it tonight because I think it's important to follow up with my conversation from last night. The conversation from last night was about my scars from the past and how if those scars are left unattended to, 
it can turn into a nasty, nasty, ugly sore. If you don't tend to it, if you don't address it, if you don't address that monster in the closet, it can turn ugly. It's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and uglier and uglier and nastier. And it is going to get uncontrollable. Trust me. Because it got uncontrollable for me. And so because of the scars from my past, I had been hurt so deeply that I was numb. You've ever been like sometimes and, and if you've gotten a tattoo before, you kind of know what I'm talking about because the tattoo, the needle pierced the skin and initially it hurts. But after a while, it starts to numb away and you don't feel it as much because that needle has been plugging into that same spot so long that that whole area has numbed. That's sort of like how pain is, like being heartbroken. The pain, I'm talking about a type of pain that takes your breath away. I was there the time, 2015. Now, before I got to the place where I was about to give up, because that's what the conversation tonight is about. The conversation is about giving up. And so before I reached that place of giving up, God said to me maybe six months earlier, he said, no matter what you see, trust me. And he was specifically talking about my daughter. And I was like, okay, God, I'll, I trust you. Like, we don't have that issue anymore. You know, <laughs> we good. I, I trust you. I, I know that you have my best interest at heart. I know that you're going to take care of me. I know that you're going to take care of my daughter. I know that you're going to take care of my family. I know you got me, God. Like, what do you, no matter what you see, trust me. He kept saying that. Cool. Maybe not even 30 days later, tragic happened. And there I was in my garage, like, what the hell happened? My daughter and I were separated. And it was the type of separation that I had no control over. And it hurt. It hurt me like someone took a knife and stabbed me in my heart. And then they took the knife that was already in my heart and twisted it. That's the kind of pain I was in. But God said to me, no matter what you see, trust me. I'm like, God, seriously, like, you do you know I've gone through? the ish that I've gone through. Like, seriously, how many times do I have to keep going through stuff? I, I, I'm, I'm only one person. Like, I can't take anymore. Fast forward from that moment when it initially happened to 2005, which was two and a half years standing on the same promise that God said, no matter what you see, trust me. And I'm sitting in the courtroom and I hear the judge say your daughter no longer your daughter no longer desire to have a relationship with you <laughs> the child that I carried in my womb for six months because she was three months premature 
the child that I lived and breathed for no longer desires to have a relationship with you. So now that the knife was already, because the knife had been in my heart for two and a half years at that point and twisted for two and a half years. And so every day for two and a half years up until that point, every single day was nothing but pain. I cried. I had panic attacks over and over and over again. I now was faced with a medical condition called anxiety. Fighting myself not to lose my mind and not to be committed to a hospital. I was there. I was like, you know what? Like, seriously. I was done. In that courtroom, I lost everything. I didn't go belligerent. I just quietly grabbed my purse, got in the car, drove home. I was numb. Everything that I had lived for was slipping away from me. The very thing that I lived for, that I loved more than my own life, that I loved more than my own life, said that she didn't want anything to do with me. So I have no reason to live. I went home. Mind you, I was on medication because now I was dealing with anxiety. So I was on Xanax. I grabbed my Xanax and I grabbed prescribed sleeping pills. And I went down to my garage and I said to God, I can't. I'm done. done. I took a handful of Xanax and a handful of those prescribed sleeping pills and I drank a bottle of wine. I was fully clothed in my garage, in my townhouse. This was June of 2015. The next morning, after all of that, after all of that, there was no way I should have woken up. I was in the garage when I took all of those pills. And when I tried to end my life, I was in my garage. That's on the third level. When I woke up, I was in my bed, tucked in. Mind you, I live alone. I was in my bed, tucked in, in my pajamas, cover on top of me. And when I opened my eyes, I began to cry. Now, my bedroom is on the third level. How I got from the garage to the bedroom in the bed and in my pajamas, I can't answer that. But when I opened my eyes, I began to cry because I was disappointed that I did not die. And God said to me, in that moment of weakness, God said to me, if you die, you will not see my promise. God was more faithful to me than I had been to him. He is so faithful to make sure that I am alive to see and to receive the promise that he gave to me. 
in all of my pain and all of my suffering and everything that I had gone through in my life. And I was so ready to give up. God said no. Because I made you a promise. And you're going to stick around to see it. <laughs> that was June of 2015. The last attempt to end my life. I've never shared that publicly. Because you look at me now and you see who I am now, but you have to understand where I've been. I fight every day for a smile. I am challenged every day to enjoy something as simple as a smile because I had lived the majority of my life crying. And now I am determined to put a smile on somebody else's face. Laughter is medicine to the soul. That's the Bible. That's not the King James Version, Shay. <laughs> but it is the Bible. Laughter is medicine to the soul. And so every moment that I have to laugh. And God is so funny that he placed me. He, he, he sent me a man that makes me laugh. And I'm not talking about any kind of laugh. Like I'm laughing so hard. I'm on the floor rolling. Like I can't, it's hysterical. I can't stop laughing. And every time I laugh like that, the thought comes to me, God's word comes to me. Laughter is medicine to the soul. So when I'm laughing, God is healing me. God has taken all of that hurt and all of that pain that I had carried the majority of my life. And he is healing me so that I'm able to share with someone who may be in that dark place. Let me check my time, y'all. Because <laughs> I can get carried away and I'm not going to get carried away because my boyfriend that makes me smile so much, he's waiting for date night. And I, and I cannot <laughs> be late for that. But seriously, I hope I said, did you hear him? He said something in there. But seriously, um, what I want to say and what I want to leave you with, words of, of contemplation, words that I want you to think about. See, the scars from our past, if we don't tend to them, as I said earlier, as I said earlier, if we don't tend to them, they can grow into something ugly. And that night when I took all of those pills, that was my ugliest moment. I no longer contemplate suicide. I don't because I'm standing on my faith. God proved to me in that moment that I have something to live for. And that something to live for isn't just to mend the relationship with my daughter, but it's also to mend broken homes, broken hearts all over the world. Because I've been there. I'm the face of you can love again. I'm the face of you can smile again. I'm the face of there is life after death. I'm the face of recovery. I'm a recovering addict. I'm that face. So if you think that you're ready to give up, if you know someone who are giving signs that they're ready to give up, 
signs of depression, saying things like, I just can't do this anymore. I'm so tired. That's the key. I'm so tired. I can't. That's the key. Listen to it. It's a sign. Call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. If you don't want to call your family, if you don't want to call your friends, if you feel like there's no one that can understand you, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I will leave that number in the comments below. Get help, please. Don't think that for one moment you can handle this level of pain by yourself. Don't think for one moment that you are all alone and no one understands. Bullshit. That is bullshit. I understand. There are others out there that understand. Please call for help. That's all I have for you guys. And unfortunately, I won't see you again until Monday because Saturdays and Sundays is family time. So I love you and I can't wait to see you again on Monday. Until next time, love you to life. Bye.